Hey guys, Dr. Mike Isertel and James Hoffman. Dr. James Hoffman here for Renaissance Periodization, and RP Plus. Kind of, uh, kind of a I don't know, public service announcement is the right <laughs> way to say this. Uh, we're not uh, qualified enough to make making those, but kind of a, a discussion we were having and wanted to bring you in on. It's something we've been seeing for a long time and only be able to been able to re very recently put into words. And here it is. There is there are a lot of like single studies and sometimes even a comprehensive amount of literature on really tiny like compounds in foods or really very small components of those foods that have really, really small but negative health effects. And people seem to be really obsessing over these and kind of rating them as good or bad and trying to eliminate all bad foods. And we kind of uh, think that this is leading us to a really, really nasty path of eventually eating nothing. So I'll give you some cool, good examples and I'll let James take away like kind of some of the implications on this. So an example, there is, this is something that actually hasn't been discussed yet, but I promise you people will get to it. Apples and peanut butter and peanuts actually have a lot of what's called caffeic acid. And it's uh, a numerously more carcinogenic than pesticides at the current rates of exposure in the United States. So the chances that... We've you apples get, also have uh, anhydrous cyanide in them as well. Uh, totally, right? <laughs> and that's just going to come out at some point. Um, it turns out there is there are some compounds in oatmeal that are anti-nutrients and they can be poisonous and consumed in large, large amounts. Nothing relevant to the human scale. And in a slightly a bigger sense of more effect, you know, if you grill your meats, then the grilling, the charring process makes them a little bit more carcinogenic just by the tiniest bits. And uh, if you eat, uh, for example, preserved uh, meats, uh, something like uh, bacon or sausage or ham, then the something about hot the curing, dogs, hot dog, yeah, hot dogs. There seems to be, you know, some enhancement of carcinogenic and other problems there that it's very, very tiny. And of course, I'm sure you've seen that, you know, dairy consumption leads to an elevation of some kinds of cancers, though it leads to a reduction in some others. What we end up getting is there's like a million foods that have these super tiny health effects each by themselves. And even in combination, the total effect is super tiny on health. Where does this, like, James, what do you think, like... If we were to take all of these very seriously and try to modify our diet to avoid these foods, is that like a sustainable practice? No, I think it's just, it would be a, a maddening effort. There's so much, you got to keep in mind, like the, the natural world is trying to kill you at all times, right? You are constantly encountering stressors, carcinogens, everything is literally killing you to some small degree. If you're really like trying to minimize every single or mitigate every single little risk that you get from eating food, then you're going to be eating nothing really, really quick. And totally. you know, this idea of like um, trying to minimize risk, these are this, there are some people who will say like, I don't eat, you know, hot dogs because they're bad for you. Those are the same people who are slamming beers and smoking, smoking yeah. or hanging out. You know, if, if, you're, if you're living in fear of what you're eating, then you better not take the bus or the subway to work. You better not go out to outdoor concerts or things like that where people are smoking and partying and doing drugs yeah. and doing other things. And you certainly shouldn't step outside when it's raining or there's a lightning storm. You know, it's just crazy. It's, it's, it's a, it's don't a, fly because that has radiation oh, exposure. Oh, not, not to mention just the risk of flying. Totally. Right? Like if, it's yep. one of those things that... Um, what about the sun? I mean... Look at me. I mean, I'm Irish. Pasty, I, I get burned if I'm out there for like 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, the sun is a giant thermonuclear bomb. Yeah. So it's just one of those things where it's kind of silly because uh, it seems like that people will be really, really risk averse when it comes to food, but not necessarily when it comes to other, what I would say, to, in my opinion, are more tangible well, risks. And they're right? more like, statistically dangerous. Yeah, like walking, walking outside in the street, like getting hit by a car, especially here in Philadelphia where people don't stop at stop signs or generally obey the law at all. <laughs> right, that's um, right. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those things where people will, will misconstrue some risks and, and really focus on others because there's something special to food. There is like the emotions of purity and yes. disgust that go into food that don't go into walking out into the sun. They don't go to like getting on a plane. People are like, ah, it feels fine. You know, you can't tell you're being bombarded by radiation. I mean, you feel just fine flying at altitude, but you're getting hit by some serious radiation. So I think there's also this like sense of elitism. When you when yeah. you say like I don't eat these things, I'm one of the better people. Uh, yeah, I'm enlightened. Exactly. I'm enlightened, and I know better, and this and yeah. that. And it's one of those things like, mm. and you are enlightened to some extent. You do know that some things are, are bad for you. But here's what it comes down to. Here's what we don't want to happen. 
We don't want an individual to sap all of the joy of all the very wonderful foods and very wonderful preparation methods of their entire life. And at the end of it, excluding every single possible bad food, or at least the ones they knew about when they were alive, because there's always building evidence for more, we don't want that person to live till age 77, where if they ate some hot dogs here and again, if they had some milk now and again, if they had, you know, whatever, and grilled a lot of meat, maybe they would have made it to age 76. Which, which kind of hot dog do you like better? New York style or Chicago style? New York's got the, like the sauerkraut. Uh, Chicago's got like the pickle and the tomatoes and the, you know. Neither. Oh. No. I'm a relish man. Relish? Uh-huh. Mustard, relish. Um... I would – there's this huge debate we got into with ketchup and hot dogs. Like actually like the U.S. Hot Dog Association it says that you're not even supposed to put ketchup on hot dogs. I don't put ketchup on hot dogs usually because their ketchup is really um, salty and there's already a lot of salt. The hot dog salty, so I usually do mustard and relish but any, and cheese. I love ketchup uh, on hot dogs. Yeah, a lot and of like, people, people do. People in Chicago like, will yeah. be like, oh, oh yeah, totally. Oh, I heard oh, about oh. that. Yeah. yeah. So – like whatever it's delicious yeah whatever so but you know you you basically can't have all the chicago new york debate goes down the drain you can't have any hot dogs (laughs) right you can't have the bun because it's enriched flour so what ends up happening is let's say you live till age 77 you earned one extra year of life by avoiding almost everything that was pleasurable is that worth it i mean when you and individuals can answer this question themselves, but it just doesn't seem like it is. Well, it's funny, too, because you could do a quality of life comparison. So, like, the quantity of life you gained is on the scale of, I would say, weeks to months totally. at best. Let's say a year. A year uh, on the top it. end. Um, but then you have the quality of life over the course of 40 years, maybe from the time you're, you're in your 20s and you make and a conscious kind of stuff, a decision. Yep. So, maybe 40, 50 years. Yep. like. You gained a year uh, at the cost of 40 to 50 of like possibly missing out on a life lot of stuff. stuff. I mean, you go to parties, you can't have the food and you got to alter your whole life. And what about the anxiety that comes with making sure all your food isn't prepped all wrong and all this stuff and worrying about health? What does this come down to? I think what we're trying to say is that these very minor concerns probably aren't worth it to most people. And there's no, it's not like if you have this idea that it's just a couple of things. And you're going to find all just the maybe five ways in which foods are bad for you and you're not going to eat. It's like, you know, grilled foods and then it's packaged foods and then that's it. Oatmeal is now on the list. Oatmeal has some compounds in it, which are anti-nutrients, which apparently make oatmeal in excessive amounts bad, right? So, so oatmeal is a bad food now? So if you, if you eat anti-nutrients, does that open like a wormhole in the galaxy where you go to another side? It's actually an annihilation reaction and you explode. Mm. Yeah. That's so, ridiculous. <laughs> no, like, so what, what – here's a really simple example. So like what types of foods actually are killing you and destroying you? I can think of one off the top of my head. It's one that I partake in probably too much. Alcohol yeah. is probably one yeah. of the only ones where you yeah. can say, like, this is killing you at some point. It, you know, in a little bit of alcohol is totally fine. But here's here's what will kill you. Ready? Developing obesity will take years off your life. And and it will reduce your quality of life. So it's like a, a double, double whammy. Double whammy. Uh, alcoholism and excessive alcohol consumption will absolutely do that. Lack of physical activity will absolutely do that. Cigarette smoking and other hardcore drug abuse will do that. Short of those factors, if you eat a fairly healthy diet, if you engage in regular physical activity, if you drink moderately, use drugs moderately or not at all, you're left with taking care of almost all the big priorities. After that, statisticians can't tell you with any any reasonable expectation that like, well, like if you cut you know, cured meats from your diet, you're definitely going to live much longer. But this is not true. And and who is this person that's eating bacon for every meal, right? Or eating sausage for every meal. Like if you start doing that, maybe you're looking maybe maybe a year, maybe a little more of life expectancy reduction. But it's not even a guarantee. Nobody lives like that. You don't have to avoid these things altogether. And a lot of those, you know, like those old timey things, I don't want to say timey, but previous concerns like don't eat too much meat, don't eat too much cholesterol, stuff like yeah. that. A lot of that is mitigated just by living a reasonably healthy lifestyle, 100%. being a reasonable body weight, being physically active. 100%. The reason why this discussion, I think, well, part of the reason got spurred is because I recently discovered the joys of the grill. Yes, I'm late yep. on developing my man card <laughs> on <late>. the grill. <laughs> um, I have been creating these horrible atrocities of food and just suffering through years and years of what oven, I like to call baked death. Yeah, beef patties and turkey spheres, which are turkey just spheres. renowned for being just horrifying. And I got a grill and 
there's something about grilled chicken that's just so much better Fresh than baked so chicken in the oven. And even just from a leftovers perspective, we were talking about this earlier. Like you see that leftover baked chicken, you're like, fuck that. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah. And it gets all like congealy and gross. But grilled chicken, you're like, yeah, I'm, I can, I can, I'm good with that. Yeah. And you got to the grilled chicken and the first thing that came to mind for me was I was like, you know, a lot of people think you shouldn't be eating like yes, that. Yeah. And you were like, wait, oh yeah, that's right. Because of the carcinogen stuff. There are people out there that do not, and we, I know people like this, they don't grill anymore, period, because they think grilling is bad. They don't eat any kind of cured meats. They don't eat dairy altogether. There's a bunch of plant foods they don't eat. Some people I know for a fact stopped eating oatmeal when it came about that oatmeal has some things that are bad for health. Everything has things in it that's bad for health. Even water, drink in excess, is bad for you. I just don't understand. There's no end to this. So it's like a, it's to me, it's like a weird dichotomy. It's like, well, you're so risk averse with your food selection, but you don't demonstrate this behavior in other aspects of your life, right? You're not, you're not walking around in a bubble or a hazmat suit. You know what I mean? Like, and we don't want to say that you should be consistent and display this kind of behavior in other parts of your life because that'll ruin your life, right? Well, yeah, and it but just seems kind of knows odd that, that totally. you would cling on to this one area For and sure. then not be. It's an area which people can more easily control, right? And take a lot of morality out of it. So I think. Our big message here as scientists, as you know, former professors, as educators, as nutrition coaches is this. Get the big stuff sorted out. Yes. Don't smoke chronically. Don't drink excessively. Manage your weight. Eat a mostly healthy diet. Stay physically active. After that, if you want to have milk as a part of your regular diet, milk products, if you want to have meat products, cured meat, grilled meat, if you want to eat a ton of veggies, all of which have all kinds of anti-nutrients in them, that is totally fine. It will sum up Ve to... Veggies are bad too? No, seriously. <laughs> it will sum up what are, to... What do we eat? No, it's bizarre world. Nothing, right? <laughs> all this stuff sums up to pretty much close to nothing. It's not worth a trade-off in almost any case. If you want to be a purist and eke out a couple of months of extra life for a terrible existence... Go for it. But folks, for the rest of us that are relatively sane in this regard, <laughs> don't get caught up in the nonsense of every single food needs to be pure and looking for these little impurities and these little things. You know, I literally saw a forum comment where a gentleman who was very well intentioned was like, hey, I eat, you know, some nominal 200 grams of oatmeal per day. Is that too much? And everyone on the forum kind of jumped down his throat at first, and then they realized he was serious, and they were like, Jesus, how does this stuff get started? And the answer is, some guru posts an article about how oatmeal has something, and it's clickbait bullshit, and then everyone <laughs> shares it, and they're like, oatmeal's poisonous. And there's no end in sight to these kinds of articles. Every favorite food you ever had that you thought was healthy, it's next on the list. Okay, here's Here's a good comparison, right? So what's going to kill you first, Mike, eating oatmeal or just living in Philadelphia? Just physically being here in Philadelphia, breathing in that Monday trash I'm day sorry. air. Philadelphia is the cleanest city oh in the God. Philadelphia area. Right. Like which consists of Philadelphia and Camden. <laughs> Oof. So, yeah, totally. And you I know, mean, like, but your you'll... exposure to all sorts of nasty stuff is, is... And if you try to go about getting your exposure down to zero you are going to drive yourself insane. Yes. And you're going to get a whole lot of nothing or a whole lot of very little for a huge trade-off. So as scientists, as coaches, as nutrition experts, we offer you this. Take care of the big stuff. Don't worry about the little stuff because it's not going to add up to basically jack shit. Yeah, it's going to ruin your life. That's it. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. See you around.